just thought it would be a special way. Maybe this would be a good one to do first, um, just because we feel so apart on this morning that you're you're celebrating this beautiful morning along with us. I want to thank Brian Orndorff, one of our board members who has decided to get up early with me and to come out here to our church property. And we thought it'd be a great uh, setting just to to begin our morning this way. Happy Easter to you. The, the Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. Uh, that would often be your response, the call and response. And, and so I pray that this, uh, this is a good experience for you as you are watching, however it is that uh, wherever you are. I want to take just a few moments. This is a little bit different than what we'll find later on this morning, our normal Easter service uh, online. You can watch that on YouTube or on our website, uh, or I believe we'll probably also be uh, pushing it through our Facebook feed. But uh, this is a little bit different. This isn't the same thing that will happen then. I just wanted to take a few minutes and, and celebrate Easter with you this way. Uh, wanted to stop and think for, for just a minute as the sun begins to rise over my shoulder, uh, as it is rising wherever you are, as the light is beginning to beam in. Uh, there was something that just really struck me about Easter this morning. Uh, and as I was thinking about it yesterday and then again this morning, there was something that really struck me about it. Uh, while this is a complete celebration of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, it's interesting to think in the accounts of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, that this is not a glory event for the disciples. I want you to stop and think for just a moment that the disciples, that's what we are. Now, we were not the original 12, of course, but or the 11 that, that are, are still around at the, at the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. We are not them, but we are called disciples. That's what we are. And so I was thinking a little bit about the disciples on Easter morning. Uh, in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, all four of the Gospels, obviously the resurrection story is given some level of attention, as rightly it should, right? Um, but it is not a, an event that, that brings a great deal of uh, positive light, doesn't shed a great deal of positive light on the disciples. Um, it's really interesting when you think about all of the people that are, that are spoken of in the resurrection account, the, the death of the burial, and then ultimately the resurrection of Jesus, uh, of all the people that are talked about, the disciples are the least impressive of anybody. The disciples have uh, the, the least positive reflection on them uh, for this particular story. Uh, as, I was, as I was reading through each of the accounts, you could stop and think, uh, about how everybody else actually got it better than the disciples did. Everyone else did. Uh, in our weekly email, just yesterday, I wrote a short note uh, in our weekly email talking about uh, how the religious leaders, uh, better than the disciples, the religious leaders understood that Jesus said that he would be, that he would be raised three days later. They actually understood that. Uh, they didn't uh, they didn't believe it. They didn't believe that it was going to happen. They didn't by faith. They were worried that, that the disciples, that the followers of Jesus would come and steal his body away. That's why they went to Pilate and asked that Pilate would, would guard the tomb of Jesus so that, so that it, they couldn't come in and, and take, the, take the body of Jesus away so as to suggest that he had risen from the dead. So what's interesting is that the religious leaders had a better understanding of the resurrection or the, the, the proclaimed resurrection as they, as they knew Jesus had said that he would rise from the dead better than the disciples. Who else got it better than they did? Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus, two religious leaders that were actually followers of Jesus. They honored him and they courageously took his body down. In John chapter uh, in chapter 19, at the end of John, near near the end of John, chapter 19, it talks about Joseph and and Nicodemus taking the body. That both of them would come to Jesus in the middle of the night, when when he was living, they would come to him in the middle of the night because they were afraid in their position to be associated with Jesus. And yet, at his death and his burial, Joseph and Nicodemus participated. You don't find the disciples involved in that. And then, lastly. Uh, as, as, the, as the morning breaks, as Easter morning breaks, as the resurrection breaks, it is a handful of women that go to anoint Jesus' body. They do so in their devotion 
and they do so in their faith. It's very interesting that uh, in a couple of the accounts, the women talk to each other as they are going to the tomb. They talk to each other and they say, who will roll the stone away for us, for, roll the stone away from the tomb for us? They went, they went to the tomb, not knowing for sure if they would even be able to get in to anoint Jesus' body, and yet they still went. So we have the religious leaders understanding that Jesus claimed he would rise from the dead. We have Joseph and Nicodemus's courage and their honor of Jesus. The disciples are nowhere to be found. And we have the women who would, at that time, not any longer, of course, we look back on the story of the women and we are astounded by their faith, but at that time, they would not have been, their word would not have been valuable. They needed to go and they needed to explain this to the disciples. They needed to be, they needed to get a man's voice to confirm what they had seen. But nevertheless, the women are, they show their devotion and their faith. Again, nowhere are the disciples seen. The resurrection is not an event that highlights the glory of the disciples. In comparison to religious leaders, in comparison to a couple of specific religious leaders who were previously afraid, and in comparison to a group of women whose word would not have been as valuable as their own, none of that was none of that was the disciples' glory. It was all owned by other people. And yet we find that Jesus invites them in nonetheless. Imagine for just a moment that Jesus, rising from the dead, and if we could, if we could sort of think of what, it, what that would even be like, that Jesus rises from the dead, and all of these other people participated in every part of his death and his burial and now his resurrection and the disciples he doesn't see them anywhere around they're not the ones that understood apparently that he would rise from the dead three days later right they they didn't even they were they were in their own homes uh afraid they they did not understand like the religious leaders they did not honor and they were not courageous like joseph and nicodemus and they were not devoted it would almost seem they were not devoted and they were not filled with the faith of the women who came to the tomb that morning. And yet I want to read very briefly a passage, maybe our favorite of the resurrection passages out of John chapter 20 this morning. John chapter 20 in verse 11. We read this, But Mary was standing outside the tomb weeping, and so as she wept, she stooped and looked into the tomb, and she saw two angels in, the, in white sitting, one at the head of head and one at the feet, where the body of Jesus had been lying. And they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? And she said to them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, and did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. And then this great verse, John chapter 20, verse 16, Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. And Jesus said to her, Stop clinging to me, for I have not yet ascended to, my, to the Father. Now listen to what Jesus says. But go to my brethren and say to them, I ascend to my Father and your Father and my God and your, and your God. Mary Magdalene came, announcing to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and that he had said these things to her. I think that the resurrection story of Jesus is not a glory event for the disciples. They don't get to claim any kind of inside knowledge. And notice that, that three of the four Gospels are written likely in by the disciples themselves. Matthew and John are, are the, the Gospels that are written directly by disciple witness, the disciple of Matthew, the disciple John. And then Mark is likely written by sort of maybe as dictation from the Apostle Peter. And so three of the four Gospels are written by the disciples, and, and yet they tell a very honest story that we didn't, we didn't understand, we didn't honor him, we were not courageous. We, um, we were not devoted. 
And our faith was weak in comparison to all of these other people who at least acted in some level of devotion, faith, courage, honor, or understanding. And yet Jesus says at His resurrection to Mary, who stayed there weeping at first and then recognizing Him as He called out her name, He said to her, Mary, I want you to go and I want you to tell my brothers that I'm alive. It's an amazing thing. We are disciples. That's what the Bible calls us. That's what we understand ourselves to be. We're not the original 11 that would have been alive and would have been witness to that and then the others that came after them. We were not there with Peter. We were not there with John. We were not there with Matthew. But we are called disciples. And so on this Easter morning, I think it's well worth remembrance that there was nothing about the disciples that was glorifying to them. This is all about the Lord Jesus. And those disciples are even contrasted with supposedly lesser individuals in the story of redemption. And yet when Jesus comes back to life and He greets Mary in the garden and He says to her, Go and tell my brothers that I am alive. That brings great courage, or great encouragement, excuse me, brings great encouragement to us that we are witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ now 2,000 years, nearly 2,000 years later. We are witnesses to it. But it has nothing to do with us. It has everything to do with our Lord and Savior. And if you are a follower of Jesus today, may, may it be for His glory that you are celebrating this day. May it be in response to the fact that, Lord, I bring nothing to this. I don't bring faith that you have not first given me. I don't bring courage. I don't bring devotion. I don't bring honor. And I certainly don't bring full understanding of what this is. And yet you, my loving Savior, have called me out. And in doing so, you have given me your spirit that I might be the one who would proclaim the resurrection of my Lord. My encouragement to you this morning on this beautiful sunrise uh, of Easter morning, 2020, it feels strange, I know. I wish we could do this in person and have this exact same conversation instead of on a live uh, social media platform that we could do it in person. And that just isn't possible for the morning. But it is still possible to celebrate and recognize that the Lord has acted on your behalf. And He has called you out by name. Please tell my brothers that I am alive. Please tell those who have followed after me. Go and tell them that I am alive and that I will soon ascend to my Father as He did to them. He is with them today. He is with the Father today. He sits at His right hand and He is interceding for each of us. I'd love to just offer a word of prayer in this beautiful morning, this celebration. We'll be back together at 1045 uh, to do our fuller Easter service. But I would just love to pray for you as this morning begins that it would be special, that it would be unique, but that it would be glorifying to the one and only that it was intended to bring glory to, Jesus Christ Himself. Would you pray with me? Father God, thank You so much for this morning, this beautiful Easter sunrise. Jesus is risen. He is risen indeed. Thank You for the chance to even engage my church family on on a a platform such as this that allows us to in some way be together, to be united in this celebration of the morning. And Lord, I thank You that You have provided us the means to do that, uh, that even as we are isolated in our homes, that we are separated from one another, that we are united in the Lord Jesus Christ. And that kind of like those first disciples, we feel a bit scattered. But Lord, would You grow our understanding Would you grow our honor and our courage? Would you grow our faith and our devotion? We thank you for all that you will do through this day and those that follow. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thanks for being with us. We look forward, like I said, to see you in a few hours. Uh, But this has been real special. Thanks again for watching. We'll talk to you soon.